Today's COVID update is brought to you by Fultech Systems, your technology center, where you'll come for the price, but stay for the service. And we're back, and we're moving into our first conversation for this morning with representatives of the National Committee for Families and Children. This morning, we're having a conversation with Ava Diaz, who is the Information, Education, and Communications Officer at the NCFC, and Janine Sabal, who is the Children and Adolescent Participation Officer at the NCFC. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Marlene and Isani. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. And today's conversation is around our children. And I think that uh, it's really great that you guys wanted to chime in um, to kind of share your perspective and what, uh, or what parents should be considering as we face the reopening of schools in a few weeks. So let's, let's start with that. Does the NCFC have a position on the reopening of schools? But Marlene, as you know, we abide by the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, by extension, the National Children's Agenda 2017-2030. And while the convention speaks to the rights of children to an education, it also speaks to the right of children to good health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so over the past couple of weeks, We've seen where the Ministry of Education, once they announced that there will be the reopening of school come next Monday, they've been meeting, making the rounds in terms of speaking about the new protocols, the rules, the regulations that will be put in place to ensure that our children can go back to safe classrooms. And we've also heard from the Ministry of Health when it comes to the health aspect, ensuring that children abide by the new rules or what has become the new normal. So for us, it's simply to say that we recognize the importance of our children having to get a good education, but we also understand in instances where we have some parents who are a bit apprehensive mm -hmm. in terms of sending their children back to school. But for this to work, what we must understand is that everybody must play their part. So while we have the Ministry of Education stepping in and saying, yes, we will have the classrooms ready to go, and we have the Ministry of Health saying, these are the new health protocols that need to be put in place to ensure that your children remain safe, we also have to look at the responsibility of parents to ensure that they also do their part to contribute to their children's children getting a good education. And of course, we can never forget the role, the responsibility of students who will be going back to school to ensure that they abide yeah. by what is being prescribed by the authorities. At the heart of what I'm seeing or hearing is the need for clear communication yeah. between all parties involved here. We're looking at the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Health. We're looking at any other agency or, or body. We're also looking at the role that parents and children must um, play as well. Now, do you believe that with perhaps such limited time going into August 10th that sufficient and clear communication has been done in terms of preparing students to return to their classrooms on that Monday? Isani, for me, it's not a couple of weeks because if you looked at it, I think the, especially the Ministry of Health, they have been at the forefront of trying to ensure the safety. Even when we, before we were talking about school, mm -hmm. um, they have been out there saying, these are some of the things that we need to do because you're not only talking about school, you're talking about the way that I, I blink of an eye life changed. Mm -hmm. And so they have been out there saying what needs to be done. We've also had the Ministry of Education and our concern is more in terms of looking at how do we maintain it? Because we all know that plans are well and good, but when it comes to implementing how will this be monitored to ensure that you're telling me that 
it's safe for me to send my child to school, but are you ensuring that we talk about social distancing? Mm -hmm. Are you ensuring that the classrooms will meet this? Are you ensuring that the, I know they've spoken of putting in additional hand washing stations mm -hmm. and we've seen where some schools have been proactive in terms of trying to get that done. So it's simply a matter of trying to, see because there's no a perfect time because what we have to understand is that COVID-19 is here with us and we that somehow we have to learn how to adapt to this new normal so we can't sit back and say oh, and wait until it's it's gone because obviously we been, we're being told by the experts that it will be with us for a while so we have to find out how we can adjust our lifestyle how can we get our children engaged because we know it's not things as usual that they will have to make changes and so we've seen in some schools where they have been there saying okay we're, we're doing some classes some in classes we're, we're doing some online and very importantly you spoke about communication I, and i think that's where we need to focus because there are some schools who up to this point have not said well to parents this is what will happen yeah. and school opens on monday and there are still questions for some parents yeah i I'm, I'm surprised by that i have heard parents tell me the same thing that there's some schools who've not advised um mm -hmm. about what the new alternative schedule will be as yet and we're talking you know what, what is it two weeks before the start of school yeah. um so it is important now the ntsc is 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 the champion of, of uh, rights for children in Belize. You work with the legislations that exist, and one of the um, legislations that we do possess, or we do have in this country, which um, I understand the Ministry of Education seems to have alluded to when people started to talk about homeschooling, is uh, the mandatory attendance of children to school. Uh, so we are also looking at a situation that if parents choose to not send their children to school, technically, if your child is under 14, you're breaking the law. Is that correct? Is that what, what the, the legislation says? That is what the legislation says. But again, Marlene, if you look at it, you have the Ministry of Education saying, we are providing a, an avenue for you to homeschool a child. Mm -hmm. But you ask the question, how many parents are equipped to homeschool their children? Yeah. So it's a complicated situation. Yeah. But at the core of it, we have to understand that we have to look at the well-being of our children. Yeah. And we know that they've lost quite a bit because while you have some schools who, through it all, they've been there, they've been providing online class, been doing, going the extra mile, we also recognize that a lot of students have fallen behind. How yeah. to bring them up? What can we do? And so... It's a complicated situation, yeah. but there is a need for us to, as Isani said earlier, communication is key yeah. because we cannot allow our children to fall behind. Yeah. And then you have some parents saying, well, I will not send my child to school. Yet we see children all over the place. So we need to find out what is best for our children and then we work towards that. But we have to do it uh, collectively. We yeah. can't do it um one by one or pulling against each other we have to decide what's the best way forward and so that's where we come in we are saying yes education is important health is important as well and we need to move forward let me put this to you as well ava as a parent right i am preparing for my child to return to school on august 31st in her case and I acknowledge and I'm fully aware of all the measures being put in place by her school in the first instance. The question, however, is what is the sustainability of all of these measures on the long term? Because while, yes, there is a push from the Ministry of Education to, to gather all the hand sanitizers, furniture, and all these other stuff, we've seen where things are taken seriously in the beginning. and. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the interest and the, the follow-through wins towards the end. Now, from the NCFC's point of view, is this something that you guys are also concerned about? 
we've looked at it as i mentioned earlier Sandy. we've seen this and not mm -hmm. only when it comes to education we've seen this where everything is fine and good initially and after a while the interest starts waning or you go to school nobody gets sick so we don't pay as mm. pay attention and it's upon us as teachers as school managers as the ministry of education the ministry of health as parents and as students because we cannot we cannot just absolve the students of their responsibilities yeah. because yeah. we need to ensure that these these are some of the things that i can do yeah. these are things that i can't or should not do so dealing with children and we know how children are and so it is necessary for us as parents yeah. the apps in the room to to ensure that we just keep at it we just keep at it and as i said earlier our concern also has to do with the fact how long will it does is there enough human resources to monitor all the schools that's there um how long will that mon monitoring take place and so again it falls on management on teachers on everybody to ensure that this works because we need for it to work you know at the core of this issue and i, and I think you you said it earlier where fundamentally this is just about what's best for children and so I think that's where the divide happens with parents. They feel that what's best with, for their children is keeping them safe and healthy. While um, we, we hear from the Ministry of Education and, and definitely um, other professionals have weighed in to say that it is important for children to get back into the classrooms, to, uh, to socialize again, and try to, to catch up on what they have not been doing the past few months. Janine, this is a, an opportunity, I think, to look at how uh, the well-being of children goes beyond making sure they're uh, fed and, and mm -hmm. not sick, uh, that there's a holistic development that's important as well. Yes. Yes, um, I believe that as well, because at the start of the whole pandemic, we realized that everybody kept saying the pandemic is affecting them, the pandemic is affecting them, but we never looked at how the pandemic affects children. Mm -hmm. So at um, NCFC, we decided that Children have voiced their opinion to matters. And with that, we started to do videos where children inform other children about the pandemic and ways they can then be engaged and be active at home. So um, we did several videos where children did, um, they showed how they could stay active at home by painting, by drawing, by interacting with their parents, um, by doing their online schools. And that way we heard their opinions on how the pandemic have affected them mm -hmm. because they too are important. Yeah. When we look at, have you guys been able to speak with persons in the rural areas in terms of being able to get a sense from them how they feel going into August 10th? No, we, well, not necessarily, Sani. What okay. we are is we've looked at parents, we've monitored um, some of the responses coming in, some of the concerns mm -hmm. coming in. Uh, we're not sure exactly where these concerns are coming in, coming in from. But mm -hmm. we are also parents, yeah. and we yeah. have yeah. concerns. Yeah. And so for us, we look at what are some of the things that I would be concerned about. Mm -hmm. So. I'm looking at my child's, um, my child, uh, what does that entail? Uh, will it be, because we have still not um, been told your child will in five days or three days or two days. So these are some of the questions that still need to be answered. Yeah. And for me as a parent, I have to ensure that my child knows that when you come out of the house, you mask, when you go to school, this is what you need to do. Yeah. You know, ensuring that you wash your hand more frequently. So he has to learn a changed behavior. We yeah. know when it comes to children, changing uh, for adults, it's difficult sometimes for us to change our behavior. Mm -hmm. So we just have to stick to it, and we can't move away from our responsibility as parents to ensure yeah. that we speak with our children. As Janine mentioned earlier, children have been affected in many ways and mm -hmm. while we talk about the, the the parents they have had to adjust to the fact that their mom or their dad might 
lost their job. During the course of the quarantine, we received reports of children being abused, and not yes. only children being abused, but women being abused more. So there are so it has been like a domino effect, mm -hmm. and we fix it. And so there are so many things that are being done to ensure that these concerns that we're seeing that these are being met. Yes. You, you know, I, I hear you know, I hear from you um, what what you talk about in terms of the, the collective responsibility and perhaps mm -hmm. that seems to be one of the mis missing factors of the conversation. We've, we've talked with teachers, we've talked with education, um, but very often we don't look at the other complementary factors that are important in facing a situation like this. Now, there are, you know, really great parents who are probably ahead of the ball on this one and already talking and, you know, checking with the schools. But there's some who perhaps are dealing with their own issues and, and perhaps haven't ventured um, into exploring what impact or how their children will be protected. How do you talk mm -hmm. to parents as well about what their role is in having the kids go back to school? Well, we're, for us, it's more about putting out messages, um, trying to reach parents as much as we can. Yeah. Uh, as you know, we have our National Parenting Task Force. They have been very active in terms of looking at positive parenting. And even the message now that they have to put out has been a little bit different because we're talking more about effective communication and the, the importance of the child recognizing that for work it has to be it has to be uh, a part of the team so emphasizing the need for again communication and the need for us to work together to accomplish what we need to accomplish which ultimately is to ensure that our children receive yeah. the very best um, education that's possible is this too much uh, responsibility on our on our I mean, not too much, but I, I can't help but watch the video that we're showing at the same time mm -hmm. when we talk. And, and one of the things that I can't imagine if I was a, a child that I would have to adjust to is social distancing. You know, kids are, mm -hmm. are very mm -hmm. huggy, huggy, touchy, touchy. You know, they, 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 they like right. connection and closeness. Um, yes. From looking at this at even a rights-based perspective or understanding the development of our children, are we asking too much of them? Well, Marlene, I'm not sure that we're asking too much of them. They have to understand. Yeah. You know, for, for all of us, this has been a learning experience because this is not something that we've gone through, or most of us have gone through before. When I remember when there was the initial close down and having to stay in the within your home mm -hmm. we i can go by my experience where my child seemed like okay what else can i, put? I can't come outside so it seemed like you know like you're trapped mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it and you say well how does that affect the child yes we we try to talk to them about it um they see they have all the fears that you might have in terms of what's happening because when it started nobody mm -hmm. knew exactly Mm -hmm. What it is in fact up to now, you know, we, we, we're always getting new information when it comes to yeah. Yeah. this disease. So it's it's about changing how we look at life itself, um, recognizing the need for us to talk to each other. They recognize now um, things that they took for granted, you know, that um, they realize how much they missed it go outside to play basketball or run around or you know yeah. so then they got confined only to using the phones and and and, and public but yeah you look at it and you say how many children have access to, to the phone so what was it that they were doing during that during that time you know they felt so just closed in boxed in how do you deal with that yeah that's that's a valid point because i don't know that we have measured what the psychological impact of it would have been on children yeah. and there is the very real possibility that we may very well relapse into the same scenario once again yeah right what's your what's, what's your advice to, to parents at this time 
Well, at this time, we're saying to parents, you're sending your children back to school. You need to keep the line of communication open. So that means you have to educate yourself when it comes to what's happening around us. I think the Ministry of Health has been doing, doing an excellent job in terms of keeping us updated as to what is happening. Mm -hmm. We can pass this on to our children, or in some cases, you have children listening to these, these programs themselves because they want to know. Okay. They also need to know what's happening. And so as a parent, it is my responsibility to ensure that my child know, what, know what's happening. My child also needs to know what are the type of behavior that is expected of him. Mm -hmm. My child also needs to know that, look, when you go to school, things it will not be as usual when school closed early it, back in March. When you go back to school in August, it will be totally different. Yeah. And yes. for the work, you have got to do your part. So we have to keep speaking. Yeah. We have to keep speaking with teachers because they don't might feel burdened, uh, feel they have additional responsibilities being put on them. So yeah. we need to keep the free flow of communication going if we are to come out on the other side better than before. Yes, and I also believe that um, we're supposed to also advise the children, not only the parents and the teachers, because then the situation affects children as well. So if you advise them and let them know they're responsible for themselves, responsible to keep themselves clean, responsible to at least practice social distance at school because this pandemic is now going to affect them on a wider scale going back to school, going back into the classroom, having to see them, see their friends and know that I have to keep a distance from my friend. I can't go close to them, hug them, say hi because I was at home for so long. So not only just advising the parents, but the the children as well. Yeah. Have you guys received any concerns? And, and I know this has been an active talking point as well. Have you guys received any concerns from parents in respect of the opening of the Philip Goldson International five days after the opening of primary schools across the country and perhaps what bearing that has on the well-being of their kids? So far, no. Um, I know I've because I, uh, when it comes to social media, I've seen some of those concerns. But concerns coming to us at the NCFC, no, we have not received any, any, um, any concern from parents when it comes to the reopening of the airport. Yeah, I, I have another question. There's, there's an unspoken issue. Um, I think that that just hasn't come to the forefront, and that is uh, childcare. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of parents are working. Um, and if their children are in and out of school, whether it is one week they're not going to school or every other day they're not going to school or every afternoon or every morning, it does mean that we may have quite a bit of unattended children um, for I don't know how long. Um, you all are aware, I know, because you, you're partners with uh, like human development and education. What what? What's being done to be able to monitor that situation? And, and what's the recommendation to parents as to alternatives? Again, Marlene, um, the networking is mm -hmm. extremely important. And when we talk about child neglect, we know yep. that that is something that is real. It's something we don't always talk about. It's one of those dirty dirt little secrets we don't talk about much because we don't really focus on the number of children who are being neglected. Earlier I talked a bit about uh, today. Look at the amount of children you see running around. So we know that this is not a new situation. This situation has been going on for some time. What is happening now, it has cast a, a light on it. And so we see more, but the sad situation is that for a lot of, ch of children, this has been their lives, this, the, yeah. in their little lifetime, this is what they have been experiencing. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's, that's the concern that instead of having school at least for Monday to Friday, um, we, we shouldn't forget that there'll be children. And, and they're twofold because there's also the, the 
older children who become parents, the little ones, mm -hmm. and then there are those who are simply left unattended. I hope that this is something that's being uh, considered by the relevant parties to ensure the safety. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I think what, what parents want to hear, I, don't, don't get me wrong, some parents have already decided that they will or they won't um, send mm -hmm. the children back to school. Yes. But there, there's some who are on the fence. And there's some who, who hear both sides and are saying to themselves, well, I don't know what I should do. Um, how do you help, or what, what kind of advice can you offer in helping them make that decision? For me, one of the things that is key is for us to look at the different situations, because not all the situations will remain will, will be the same. So for, as a parent, I would think it's my responsibility to go into the school to see what is being done, uh, the safety of my children. Um, earlier, Danny talked about concerns. I know one of the concerns that um, that came up was that in one of her presentations the, uh, from Ministry of Education, it was mentioned that it was not that standing fans would not be used in classrooms. Mm -hmm. so for a lot of Parents raised a red flag in terms of we or children's classroom, and we know that it's, it's extremely hot. So, asking my child to go back into this classroom, no, they can't use fans. What will happen when you're talking about the comfort of the child? So there are still so many questions that need to be answered. I'm sure the Ministry of Education they're looking, and the Ministry of Health they're looking situations and saying um, these are some of the concerns, these are some of the gaps, this is what we need to do because we can't expect it to be perfect. We keep saying yeah. this situation that we're entering into, the, dealing with for the first time yeah. for most. So it's a, it's a situation where we're learning as we're going along, mm -hmm. but it is key to monitor and it is key for parents to ensure that your child's well-being at the center of it. So while we're talking about the importance of education, I also need to know that my child is being kept safe. And when you look at it, if every parent takes that approach and every child knows some of the things I should do, shouldn't do, it makes the environment much safer. And so that is key to, for us to, to move forward. I'm listening to you and, and I take away from it a very interesting point. I think perhaps if every school, every management or administration took it upon itself to have somewhat of an orientation with parents going into this new school year, given all the changes that need to be implemented, I think that would go a long way in terms of building confidence in parents. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. for me, if my child's school calls me into a meeting that says, okay, we'll walk you through what the processes are that we have put in place, then I am comforted yeah. that my child is going into a safe environment. Mm -hmm. It's not just, okay, on Monday, August 10th, it's the first day of school, and I'll just go and drop my child off at school, and, well, she's at the mercy of, of what happens next. It would be mm -hmm. better if they took it upon themselves as a matter of their responsibility to say, well, look, come in, we'll show you what those measures are, we'll give you the assurances that, you know, as a staff, this is what we'll do to ensure the well-being of your child while he or she is in our care. At least with the, the parents' could, association. Could, yeah. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. I go totally ahead. agree with you, Danny. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you, and that's where earlier you asked about the timeline. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you're talking about this week, some schools, like I know, um, St. Joseph put out, um, and they had meetings in terms of saying parents from whichever class you come in and we will discuss. I know that took place already. Uh, if more schools would do that because parents can't just sit back and assume, because we keep saying things will not be the same. Mm -hmm. And again, communication is key. So. It's not simply putting out a, a post on, on Facebook. You have to ensure that you reach parents so that they can have a say in, in, in what's happening, or at least, as you said, have that reassurance mm -hmm. that sending my child to school, I can, you know, it's like a, 
um, a sense of relief because I know my child is in a safe environment and mm -hmm. things are being put in place to ensure that that remains. Yeah. But not only do an orientation with the parents, you have to do orientation with the children to see if the measures that you are being, that you are going to put in place will work for them. Yeah. Because if school restarts and the measures that are already placed there doesn't work, what will the administration do? So I believe orientation for parents and um, children is important mm -hmm. so that we know that the what we're putting in place for them would work and keep them safe. Yeah. All right. Well, ladies, we do appreciate you uh, sharing or joining into this conversation at this time. We know how uh, you work in the best you work in the best interest of children at all times, and clearly, uh, there are still some questions to be answered. And hopefully, um, we can see more of a move to be able to uh, provide some clarification on these issues. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. And with that, uh, we are going to go ahead and take a break, and we will come back and tell you all about a publication mixed with music, and it's called Paranda Boys. This COVID update was brought to you by Foltex Systems, your technology center, where you'll come for the price, but stay for the service. <laughs>